this news right this is kind of slightly old news but there's a little bit of an update today i'm not sure if the update is true based off a post i saw on a forum but essentially there's this story which i've stumbled upon on youtube about this guy called omi and the hellcat so omi in the hellcat um let me get this article up here courtesy of the new york times my thing ain't working but this is courtesy of the new york times says um uh does fancy cars he flaunted on youtube a 30 million fraud scheme paid for them the u.s says a flamboyant youtuber known as ermine the hellcat was charged with illegally selling his copyright tv shows and movies through an online service prosecutor said so i'm not sure if you know this guy he's like a bigger black dude from america who's known for like waddling around um his massive estate and mansion somewhere with all these amazing white cars you know all these different models and brands i'm pretty sure everything was white massive house Else, but he's only one of the only kind of i'm rich off social media and doing my little business things online who i saw who was very upfront about what he actually did and it was actually seemed like a legitimate business even though it seemed highly illegal it did seem like he was actually selling something people actually wanted and at the time i think when i first discovered him he was selling these kind of these sticks that he kind of preloaded with content and then i guess that then went on to being sticks that he like kind of loaded with uh patches that you could watch different kind of tv shows and things on whatever it may be and of course if you're somebody that doesn't want to pay full price for cable or just wants to have a full selection of stuff and pay a discounted rate then you'd go and obviously hire a service and do it and i guess you know something like that especially if it's kind of priced at like a nominal fee um you're gonna make a lot of money really really quickly and he managed to do so um you know he racked up the millions and then he tried to kind of invest that money into kind of legitimate stuff like houses and gyms and no is it gyms or auto body shop. i forgot what it was it's a long time ago i watched that video but in general he kind of tried to make that money and then flip into other things but he's very upfront about business again one of the only ones you'd see who was kind of legitimately was a good businessman but he kind of obviously had clearly something to sell he wasn't just selling you um a course on how to sell a course you know how those kind of flipping fraud influencer youtube people do but of course what he was doing was highly illegal i kind of had the feeling it was he doesn't think so and the feds are basically come after him and they come after him in a big way i think his house has been already raided or his mansion has been raided like three or four times he's most of his cars and assets have been seized and now they're kind of getting to the point where they're trying to offer him a plea deal or say if he wants to go to trial and he's now having to decide what he wants to do going forward but let me just read a bit of the statement and i'll kind of update you on the latest goings on so this is part of new york times um it says on youtube he was known as ermi in the hellcat a flamboyant business mogul in a diamond study jewelry who commanded a fleet of luxury cars including lamborghinis ran his own clothing line and restaurant but even as he lo lounged in his sprawling suburban home sorry oof Showed off his rotating collection of high-end cars, he acknowledged that the federal government was closing in. In June, he posted a video titled FBI is Back, in which he filmed himself wearing a large diamond-encrusted pendant that bore his brand name Reloaded. In a dual mode, um, he warned his 790 subscribers that the FBI had seized more than 30 of his cars and millions of dollars from his bank account, that he was going to be indicted on charges that could include money laundering. He says, I've been, I've been kind of depressed about it, he confessed. On Wednesday, the federal prosecutor said that they charged on me, whose real name is Bill Omar Cascarilco, Carasquillo, Carasquillo, two of his associates in a scheme that involved illegally selling copyright video content to thousands of subscribers on Mr. Carasquillo's own streaming service, which was called at various times Reboot, Gears Reloaded, and Gears Reloaded. The scheme netted Carasquillo and his associate more than thirty million dollars from about 2016 until November 2019. He was living better than most rappers. Let's just say that. Um, according to prosecutors, Mr. Carasquillo, 35, of Newsboro, New Jersey he used the money to buy houses dozens of cars including ones he regularly flaunted on youtube so he flipped that money of course into depreciating assets with cars but he then flipped it into real businesses which i'm sure is still making him a lot of money in the background uh, mr cascarello could face a life in prison if he's convicted of charges with his conspiracy violating digital mi mi millennium copyright act reproduction of pr protected work access device fraud making false statements to a bank and money laundering so there's a lot of really dodgy nefarious things which i think i kind of catched up on that guy called um spencer corella cornell i think is that his name he kind of did a really good breakdown of it and basically said even though omin helka is kind of pleading naivete and ignorance well, he said naivety isn't kind of um what does it say? isn't an excuse to break the law but he's he is claiming a lot of 
he is basically saying i don't know about a lot of things and basically saying that this is a loophole i was able to exploit it and the feds are just angry so he might have a point to stand on but the fact that they're coming after him with such ferocity and the fact that they're trying to make a big example of him maybe because he was really flashy and he did kind of throw in people's face wealth and stuff which i think is an interesting thing to think about right because it does appear like it does appear for whatever reason if you're from a minority background and you happen to be very successful and you happen to show that wealth on social media you tend to get a lot more scrutiny from the you know from the feds um in general than your white counterparts because i think of somebody like a what's his face um what's that guy's name man the white dude with all the chicks that's around him oh you know what i'm talking about isn't it what's his name the one that everyone says is broke now but he's he, and supposedly his dad is the one that funneled all his money and his dad's a scam artist blah 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 uh doesn't matter anyway he was on joe rogan a couple of times but that guy right he's not got in he's not getting the same sort of attention that only the hellcats getting in a legal way leading proceeding way maybe there is a case being built up about him behind the scenes but i've not heard one thing of him being kind of punished for his quote-unquote crimes that everyone keeps alleging he does because i think the, the premise around him is basically uh mark belzerian is it mark belzerian was a belzerian that guy yeah that him essentially what the idea or the update around him is that even though he presents himself as some sort of like i think he says he made his money um in poker right but allegedly people internet sleuths and detectives and whatnot are, are alleging that his actual wealth comes from his dad who was also a quote unquote scam artist who i think went to prison and that's where he got most of his money from and most of the stuff that he flaunts that he says is his isn't actually his it's all rented which which is interesting part because you know you, you don't have to be a flipping ivy league graduate to know if you looked at him that he didn't own any of that shit do you know what i mean you, you know it is all kind of a ruse on social media to look a certain way because we know what actual wealthy people actually look like and i don't know you never really got the fact that he was wealthy you just got the idea that maybe he had access to these places he was obviously well connected because of who he hanging around with he obviously ran a really tight ship in terms of how he dealt with the women and whatever yeah i mean yes cool but in terms of him being ultra wealthy i didn't really kind of get that vibe from him so maybe he could be excused for kind of obfuscating the truth and being a little bit you know purposefully misleading people in that regard but still there's no criminal proceedings being brought up against him but Omin the Hellcat is getting, you know, literally rained down on um, by everybody <laughs> that can rain down on him. And so much to the point now where he's saying he's depressed and shit. They want to throw him into prison. Like, it's just mad. And again, this is kind of white collar crime. Usually people kind of get away with this with paying hefty fines and maybe spending a couple of years in prison and whatnot. But they are throwing mad numbers at him. I mean, football numbers at him in terms of times he's going to spend in prison. And it's like, I don't know. It feels like a little bit of a, what's that word called? not a harmless crime but who's it actually affected what big corporations who were able to kind of fleece their kind of viewer customers out of a, a few extra bucks for their bill on cable and whatnot who gives a shit but they're coming after him with a ton of bricks even though again that damn bilzerian guy he's the one flying out young women all over the world i don't know what they're if they what their deal is and what's going on over there i don't even want to get into that then he's also kind of you know perpetuating this idea that he's a poker millionaire then i think he started that weed business and he's probably got a crypto and nft like all the other flipping influencers that scam people do so it just feels a bit odd i mean so far we've not seen the only haircuts nft or crypto have us have you seen one it doesn't seem like he's a he's a scammer in that way he just kind of likes buying nice expensive again that's the thing i'm not a fan of this i would never have done this i would have kind of kept my mouth shut and just kept to move on and kept it moving but some people do enjoy flaunting their wealth like excessively like to the point where he looks ridiculous right he's wearing like 17 chains and shit it's like come on relax but some people like doing that so i don't think you should be punished for wanting to wear your wealth especially if again you're from where he's from you've grown up the poor and legitimately these things hold a lot of value for you this is your way of kind of you know telling yourself that you made it yeah you know i mean you've definitely made something at yourself when everyone thought you couldn't do it and then people are then using it as a negative to then kind of dig into your pockets to see what you're up to so what if you would have just kept quiet and just moved to bali and didn't show anything that you kind of had they would have let them alone but that's not fair either do you know what I mean because if you are doing something for, you know something flipping untoward and you happen to live a kind of modest lifestyle you should also be you know um met with the full force of the law but this just feels a little bit like they're picking on him just a little bit 
A continuous of digital piracy schemes have proliferated in the recent years and 2019 report released by the US Chambers of Commerce estimated that they cost the American economy at least 29 point billion a year. It doesn't matter though. They write it all off again, give them more flipping subsidies and loans. It doesn't, this is all gay. It's like, after you watch Squid Game, you realize, man, this it's just all nonsense. It's just all money on the screen. In an, in an indictment, prosecutor said Mr. Crescarello uh, Carasquillo, sorry, um, and his associate Jesse Gonzalez of Pico Rivera, California, and Michael Baron of Richmond, NY, were must forfeit nearly 35 million in assets, including more than 50 cars and motorcycles and dozens of properties in Philadelphia. Yeah, they just did too much, innit? Remember all those old kind of, not old, no, those, the early series of like narcos when they, the, the main guys would get pissed off if the underlings were starting to buy like crazy shit because it draw the attention of the feds, which it always did. But people just can't help themselves. There is something about humans, especially if you're dealing in that kind of illicit crime and money is coming in hand over fist. There's something that you just can't help yourself. There's some driving force, some fire in your belly that's just telling you, buy it, buy it, buy it. Because you know how good it's going to look. You know how good it's going to feel to kind of drive down your estate or your hood or your barrier or wherever you're from, right? In the flipping drop top Lambo. People that kind of counted you out and shit and go beep, beep, beep. You know how good it's going to feel. But little do you know that's going to cause you so much pain down the line. You might legitimately die off the back of it. Do you know what I mean? That's how crazy it is. But they just can't help themselves. It's like a moth, you know, it's like a moth to a flame. Do you know what I mean? Um, you can't go... It says here, you, you can't just go and monetize someone else's copyrighted content with impunity. Of course, said Bradley S. Benavides, the acting special agent in charge of the FBI. He said, that's the whole point of securing copyright. Dante Moses, a classical lawyer, said his client denied the charges. He said, let's see what the, the lawyer for Omi um, Helcott said. He said, Mr. Kakarola tapped into a brand new, unregulated industry and was very successful. Most people are called pioneers when they do that. Omar is called a criminal. The government assumes that my client is not smart enough to do legally because of his background. He is and will prove that okay let's see so the other update about this which is kind of blew my mind again it's a forum post i'm not going to show it or link to it because i don't know if it's true but allegedly omina helka has been offered a deal by the feds right which we usually what they do if they kind of racked up a big case against you they'll usually offer you a plea deal or some regard so you can you know take a lesser sentence maybe pay a more of a fine you know they try and work something out but effectively they've still brought you down they've done the job but you know in an interest of kind of getting this the, the case kind of tied up and you know into a nice crisp bow and getting the people that obviously brought you down a promotion they'll offer you a plea deal so allegedly they're offering Omi and the hellcat the following two years in prison um, or 20 months and they keep all the possessions cars homes and properties and youtube channel and bank accounts right no so, so yeah they're offering him see it so what 17 no they're, they're offering her 17 years in prison yeah 17.5 years in prison if he just confesses 17 and a half which is 18 years or he takes um or he takes 20 months and they keep all the possessions cars homes properties and youtube channels and bank accounts supposedly he turned it down he turned down both offers right um uh, you know so he turned down the 18 years of, of course and he may turn down the 20 months and go straight to trial so obviously the 18 years is ridiculous because he's essentially going to admit his guilt and spending 18 years in prison is just mad um but he also might turn down 20 months he's that certain that if he goes to trial he can win which is usually nuts because usually if the feds give you those kind of plea deals they usually give it to you because under their remit under their guise of what they know the law talking with the prosecution maybe talking with the judge whatever and just analyzing past cases i don't know wherever they're going to take the court wherever they're going to take the case to and what court is going to be how the jury might decide they've got some things that they work in they kind of consider so if they're offering you that sort of time, that usually means you're not you're probably going to get worse than that if you go to trial. So if they offered him 18 years, he might get double that if he goes to trial, maybe more, maybe life. It's just it's nuts like that. So the fact that he's willing not to take the 20 month is maybe an indication of his kind of entrepreneurial um, risk adverse. No, not uh, obviously no risk seeking kind of personality that he has in order to get involved in kind of that copyright streaming, illegal streaming of stuff online in the first place. Right. You have to have a you have to have to have to, you have to have some massive cojones on you to do that kind of um move and that kind of hustle in the first place so it's no surprise that you'd want to turn the deal down but i was just looking at thinking yikes this guy who's been making money on the internet which is really difficult online you know figuring stuff out um find a little niche 
been you know enjoying the good life buying every car, new cars every week waddling around his mansion with all these massive chains on probably getting to smash through all the baddest bees in whatever place that he lives is suddenly now going to face the prospect of maybe going to prison for flipping you know 30 plus years or 20 months and he's deciding maybe to reject both deals and just go straight to the trial but again if he wins he's going to be a legend you know what i mean but surely if you're an entrepreneur of his ilk you will take the 20 months to just say you know what even to take all my stuff i'm going to prove when i come back because for sure just on youtube alone he'll be able to make a good low good amount of money telling his story of how he survived in prison what he learned da, 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 da. but for sure he could if he's been able to make this amount of money because that's usually what happens isn't it? if you're an entrepreneur or somebody has been able to make you know have a small business whatever it may be there is a big likelihood that you are able, you are able to replicate your success if somebody takes you back down to zero because you just have that in you you have that genesis qua you have that gene you have that hustle mentality you may be good with numbers you may be resourceful you may be super intelligent whatever there's something about you that is suited to that kind of line of work so to someone taking all your possessions away and making stuff from zero isn't really going to change much so yeah mad respect to omi the hellcat from afar brother but take the 20 months mate Tw take the 20 months and just lick your wounds and come back stronger next time that's what i would say but again what do I know? <laughs>